Let me make one thing plain right from the start. This is not a replica XKSS built from plastic. This is an XKSS. Built by Jaguar themselves over 10,000 painstaking hours. It's the real deal. In fact, it's as real as the real ones from way back when. The chassis is made from a special steel called Reynolds 531. It's what they originally used to build the World War II Spitfire, and it's light, only weighs 39 kilograms. And then there's the body. The tooling and the technical drawings were all destroyed in the fire, so they had to scan an original from 1957 and then work backwards from that to make it in incredible detail, right down to the rivets. Every one, the number and the position, is as it was. And there's over 2,000 of them. But it was the engine that was the trickiest bit. The plans for that weren't destroyed in the fire, but I've got a copy of them here. But there was a page missing. So they had to get an original engine and saw it in half to find out how it worked. No one has ever made a car like this before. It's a world first. So it's small wonder it's priced at just over one million pounds. Or for half a million pounds more, you could have one of these. an Aston Martin DB4 GT lightweight. And back in the late 50s, it was the fastest car in the world. Flat out, it would do 151 miles an hour. But this is not from the late 50s. Despite what you might think when you look at its period dashboard and its period six-cylinder twin-spark engine, it was actually built a few weeks ago. So, like Hammond's Jag, it's an old car that's brand spanking new. So, did these two ever race against each other in period? No, they did. They did. May 1960. I was a month old. I was ten years off being born, mate. Yeah, whatever. Picture of it here, look. Oh, look, there they are. Well, it's actually a D-type. Yeah, but that's it is... race version. Yeah, there. exactly. DB4 GT lightweight. I mean, that was proper racing in those days. No stewards' inquiries every no. time there was a bump. They just finish the race, have a drink, and then some sex. We should give it a bash. Ah, oh, sex? No. Happily, we were in the French town of Poe. And it was here, in 1901, the first ever Grand Prix was staged. They were closing roads for races here long before they thought of doing the same thing in Monaco or Detroit. And today, they were closed once more. For us. Yes! That was a skill I never... 
never thought I'd need to use again. Good luck changing a typewriter ribbon. Whoa, that was that was me not matching the revs up. And that was it. Not forgiving me. The really good news though is the uh, is the brakes. They're made using modern materials, unlike in Hammond's Jack. <laughs> yep, in here it's just me and my big hairy balls. And they need to be big. I can only brake when I'm accelerating, seriously. The power for the brakes comes off the gearbox, so with the clutch in, there isn't any. Who thought that was a good idea? Right, time to unleash the 3.4 litre straight six. That's 262 brake horsepower bouncing off the walls. Ferraris were hitting 160 on the Molsan straight. Jaguar D-types were hitting 172. And remember, this is essentially a D-type. Eventually, though, the people of Poe wanted their town back. So Hammond and I called time on the fun and games and sat down for a natter.